Okay. Hi everybody. Uh, in the next 40 minutes, we are going to speak about A-B testing, and I will show you how to uh, perform a simple A-B test with the Google Analytics on your Type O3 website. So, uh, we are going to. I'm going to introduce you the A-B testing uh, concept. I'm going to show you a Type O3 extension that will help you on uh, A-B testing and how to configure uh, uh, Google Analytics for your first A-B test. At the end, I will give you some uh, few tips uh, on how to perform uh, A-B testing. Something about me. My name is Mauro Renzuti. I'm the CTO at WebFormat, an Italian uh, system integrator agency. I'm a Type O3 developer and, con and consultant since uh, 2004, so uh, they are 10 years for me too. And I'm a Type 3 and a Magento certified developer and rover, let me say. Let's start with A-B testing. First of all, A-B testing is not about PHP, HTML, unit testing, Serenium, Mink, Behat. It's not about that stuff. A-B testing is about user experience. So A-B testing uh, will help you to test the user experience of your website. But you may say, why do we need uh, to test our user, uh, our interface, uh, the user experience of our website? We have been de uh, designing uh, interfaces for years. We all know all the best practice. Our website is performing well. So why do I have to test the user experience of my website? The main reason is that uh, humans are unpredictable. Sometimes uh, uh, humans uh, will find uh, very strange ways to use your interface. So uh, you may uh, find that uh, uh, the, uh, the design you, t you, uh, you implemented is not the best one for your users. Let me show you some uh, uh, funny pictures about, uh, um, uh, about unpredictable uses of uh, products. The first one, yeah. And uh, I think that these guys are very crazy. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, this is the best one for me. <laughs> yeah. So you may design uh, a way to use your, uh, uh, your product, but uh, the user experience uh, may find another way to use it, a better way. So what do I want to say? I want to say that you know the best practices. You know that uh, this button has to be placed in this place and, do, and has uh, to, be, uh, to have this color because uh, this is the best practice. But your users may prefer another button, another place, another color. So you may want to test it. If we check Wikipedia, uh, we, uh, we find that uh, the goal of an A-B test is to identify changes to web pages that increase or maximize an outcome of interest. What does it mean? An outcome of interest means that you want to maximize the number of uh, uh, items put in your cart, the number of orders of your uh, e-commerce website, the number of searches, the number of contacts from a contact form. So you want to test two versions, or more than two versions, of your web page to know which one is the best, uh, which one gives you the, uh, the most uh, uh, outcome of interest, so the, mo uh, the most number of orders, the most number of uh, contacts. So when you perform an A-B test, first of all, you need a target. So you have, uh, you have a goal to reach. You have to define your target, and then you can test the ways to reach your target. So uh, some examples are, as I said, uh, newsletter subscriptions, orders for an e-commerce website, and so on. So first of all, you have to think about your target. Then, you have the possibility, have the possibility to perform two kinds, two kinds of tests. Of tests. The, first the first one, the simplest one, is an A-B test. That means that you have two versions of the, of the, of the same page. They may be, they may be very different versions. versions. And you want, and you to, want know to know which one of these uh, two, uh, two versions uh, gives, you gives you the best result. result. Usually, Usually uh, when you create a new page, so you may have two versions of the same page with different colors, with different steps, messages, buttons, and so on. And you want and to you know, know which version performs better. 
the other, the other kind of kind of test is yes, a very valid, valid test. test. That means that, means that you have one, one page, page, and you want, you want to know if, uh, if uh, changing, changing this button, this button or changing, or changing the title, or changing, or changing the, 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 text, the text, we give, we give uh, you a better performance. performance. So you have, so you have one, one or one reason, reason, reason you want to know which combination, which combination of uh, changes will give, give you the best performance. This is a very valid test. It compares more than one change. So just, just to give you, give you an example, example, a very simple, very simple kind of, kind of, of uh, text, text, you have the same page, 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 you have, you have uh, uh, two buttons, uh, one, uh, one button, button and you want to know if, 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 if the red one, one, one will perform better than the, the, the black one. one. When I say when we we perform better, I mean, I mean that your users will click more on the red button than the black one. And this is a very simple kind of heavy test. A multivariate test, test, test we test more, more than, than, than uh, the change of the, 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 the button. button. For example, you may you want to know if a change in the title, the title or, or, and or, or, or change in the image will give you a better you performance. performance. So you create, so you create more than more one version. The first one the is the original one, one. then you have a version with a different title, then, 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 then you have the different image, sorry. Then you have a version with the different title, then you have a version with the different title and the different image. And you want to know which one performs uh, better. This is just to introduce you uh, the concepts about A-B testing and uh, um, uh, multivariate testing. So, let's make an example. Let's construct our first uh, A-B test. Uh, let's uh, imagine that we have a contact form to uh, collect contacts in our website. And uh, we are not satisfied about the number of contacts uh, that we are getting. So we want to try to increase this performance. And we, uh, we think that uh, a good idea is to uh, include in our contact form a message a privacy statement to say that uh, uh, the contact, the collected data will be um, collected in a safe way and will be not shared with uh, other companies. So we are starting from this uh, uh, contact form and this is our version A. This is our original contact form. We can then introduce the privacy statement here. And uh, this is our version B. Okay, but wait a moment. Why did you put uh, the text, uh, the privacy statement, on a in, uh, in black? Why not with another color? You may say, all the labels are black, so it's obvious to me to put it uh, in black. Okay, but since you are uh, trying to improve the performance of your uh, contact form, you may want to try another color. For example, you may want to, uh, to put a green text, because green is associated to safe. So why don't try uh, a green text? So you can create a third version, your uh, C version, with uh, the same statement but uh, with a green uh, uh, color. And this is our test. It's a very simple test, uh, I know, but it's just for an example. So we have three versions of the same contact form. Let's prepare our Type 3 website uh, to uh, uh, with uh, these three versions. The simplest way is to create uh, three different pages, of course. So we may, want, uh, we may have the original page and uh, we can create another page and uh, another one. So we have three versions of the same page. This is a very simple way to, to have uh, three different contact forms. The pro is that it's very, very simple. The con is, is that uh, the number of pages may uh, explode if you, have a lot of, uh, if you want to perform a lot of tests on your website. And of course, it's not always easy to have uh, multiple pages uh, if, we, uh, uh, if you are using uh, plugins or uh, stuff like that. So it's not always the best solution. Another way to perform an A-B test on your Type 3 website is uh, uh, using uh, an extension. I, this is an extension that we created uh, uh, one year ago, I think, to uh, allow us to perform A-B tests in, a, in an easier way. 
Uh, you may find this uh, in uh, the typo tree repository in a few days, I think. I didn't have the time to write the documentation yet, I'm sorry. Uh, it provides you a way to have different contents on the same page without having to create multiple pages of on your uh, website. So let's, uh, uh, sorry, okay, let me show you how to use it. First of all, obviously, you have to install the extension. Then you have to include the TypeScript template. And then you have to create uh, A-B testing alternative records. That is, you have to create a database record, a record uh, in your backend for each variant. So in our case, we have uh, a record for the base, for the original version, for the black version, and for the green version. You need three records on the database. And then you can create three content elements on the same contact us uh, page and assign each content element to the, uh, to the, to the A-B testing record. On the back end, uh, when creating a content element, you will find a new field on the access uh, tab where you can specify that this content element has to be shown only when uh, uh, providing this, this version of the page. So on the same page, you have, in this case, three contact uh, forms, uh, and uh, each of the contact form uh, will be provided only for, uh, when uh, a specific version is requested. Of course, on the back end, uh, on, the, uh, on TypeScript, you have to, cr uh, to configure uh, something in TypeScript, uh, and in this case, you have to create some conditions uh, and uh, these are necessary for uh, caching purpose, just to avoid uh, um, disabling the caching at all. So with these uh, conditions, uh, you can continue to have uh, the caching on your TYPO3 website and provide the different versions of the same page, of course. But uh, using these conditions, you can, create, you can uh, uh, define other um, configurations. For example, you can include uh, different CSS and uh, JS files uh, for different versions of the page. You can modify the standard CSS uh, um, styled content uh, uh, TypeScript. And of course, if you are using the static file cache, you have to disable it. Otherwise, uh, the first version created will be provided to uh, uh, all the other users. At the end, you can test it. So you just created three content elements on the same page. You assigned each content element to a, uh, to an etern to a um, A-B test record. And now you have to test it before providing it to your users. To test it, you can use a plugin that is provided by the extension that gives you a simple uh, list of links where you can click uh, each link and uh, see how the page is uh, um, provided to the users how each version is provided to the users, just for a test. In this way, you can, create, you can uh, prepare your TYPO3 website for an A-B test uh, without having to create multiple pages. And, uh, of course, the pro is that you don't have to create multiple pages. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the con is that it requires some configuration and uh, an additional extension. Okay, these are the two ways. In the next, uh, uh, in the procedure of the talk, we are uh, uh, thinking about this second uh, configuration. So we are using uh, the extension. Okay, let's configure your uh, Google Analytics for the first A-B test. I, I thought uh, to use uh, Google Analytics because I think that uh, everybody here knows Google Analytics and uh, I think that most of you are uh, already using Google Analytics to collect data from your website. But there are uh, other uh, platforms, other services that uh, may be used for uh, A-B testing. So it's not uh, only Google Analytics. Uh, you can use uh, uh, some other, uh, any other tool that you want. But for this talk, uh, I selected to use Google Analytics. So first of all, of course, we need a goal. We have to test uh, the performance of our contact form, so our goal may be uh, uh, is, uh, the thank you page, the page that uh, a user 
is redirected to just after uh, filling in the contact form and uh, submitting it. So we can define that the our goal is the thank you page. Okay, just some screenshots uh, from uh, Google Analytics. Uh, to, to create, uh, first of all, you have to, to configure the goal on uh, Google Analytics. So you have to go on the admin uh, section. Then you have to, on under the view section, you have to set goals. And then you can create a new goal. Uh, you, may, uh, you can select uh, from uh, some existing templates for goals. For example, for uh, e-commerce, uh, no, sorry. Uh, not yet, no, I'm sorry, not now. Uh, so you can select uh, one of the existing templates or in our case, uh, we can select a custom goal. And then you have to, to put a name of the goal and a type. In our case, we want uh, to, uh, to test that a, a user reaches a specific destination. At the end, you just have to, to put the URL of your destination and uh, create the goal. Okay, so now we have the goal. That's fine. We have the goal, we have the three contact forms, so we have all the ingredients necessary, uh, necessary for our, uh, for our A-B test. So let's create our first A-B test on Google Analytics. Uh, to create an A-B test, you have to go on the reporting section of your uh, analytics account, select behavior and select experiments. On, the, on Google Analytics, uh, they don't speak about A-B test, but they speak about experiments. Why? Because uh, there are two kinds of tests. We already seen it, uh, A-B test and multivariate test. So they speak about um, experiments. Okay, sorry for this slide. <laughs> Too many information. Uh, okay, while creating your first uh, experiment, you have to select a name, uh, you have uh, to select the goal. We just created the goal, so we have to select uh, the goal we just created. And then you can select uh, the, p the percentage of traffic to the, uh, for the experiment. So you, can, you may say that I want that all of my visitors will test my pages, so all of my vis visitors will be involved in my test. Or you may say that uh, half of my visitors will be involved on my test. You can select uh, the, um, the percentage you like. There's no problem for that. Okay, you can get an email while uh, testing. Uh, and this is interesting. You can distribute your traffic. You can define uh, how, to to how to distribute your traffic to each variant. So we have three variants, the original one, the black and the green ones. And uh, you may say that you want 30% uh, for the original, 30% for the version A, 30% for version, uh, sorry, for version B and for version uh, C. So uh, an equal distribution of traffic. Otherwise you can say, okay, uh, Google, I trust you. You can decide the, uh, the um, amount of traffic for each version based on the trend of your experiment, of the experiment. So Google is able, uh, can uh, define that uh, for each version, uh, a specific amount of visitors uh, will be involved uh, with that version. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how this algorithm works uh, uh, behind the scenes, but uh, on the Google um, uh, pages, on the support section of Google, it is described how this algorithm works. So if you are interested on it, you can go on the Google uh, pages and uh, check for it. And then you have to define a minimum time uh, for your, the experiment to run. That means that uh, uh, the experiment is not going to run for two weeks, but uh, it is going to run for almost two weeks. But it, uh, the experiment may run for one month, two months, three months. Uh, it will run until you will stop it uh, or until Google is able to define that this is the best version for your goal. <coughs> and uh, at the end, you have to define a confidence threshold. That means that uh, to define which is the, vi the winner, which is the best uh, version of the page, Google has an algorithm that uh, 
may say, okay, based on the trend, this is the best uh, version, and uh, you can define the threshold of this algorithm. The highest is the threshold, and the longer it takes to perform your test, because Google has to be sure. The highest uh, is the threshold, Google, uh, the algorithm has to be sure about the results. The next step, you have to say to Google Analytics which are the versions, of course. So, the original one, version uh, B, in my case, or version 1, and version C. As you see, it is always the same page with a, a get parameter, and this is the UID of the uh, A-B testing version record, the one we created with uh, our extension, if you remember. We have uh, three versions of the page with uh, three different uh, UIDs. There is uh, an important uh, uh, flag that you have to remember to check, I think. In our case, we always check it. And it means that uh, even if a user is uh, redirected to a different version, for all of the other uh, uh, statistics in Google Analytics, uh, the data is collected as uh, he visited the original version. So, uh, when you see the, uh, the most visited pages, uh, you won't see uh, uh, the other versions, but just the original one. And all the data is uh, calculated uh, into the original page. So you don't spread your statistics uh, along uh, all the versions. Okay, uh, we are uh, almost uh, uh, at the end, I think. Google uh, now provides you a JavaScript. Uh, a JavaScript that you, has, uh, that you have to put into your uh, contact us page and only into that page. And uh, this JavaScript uh, is useful for Google to collect data and uh, to decide which version to provide to the user. So, uh, via uh, TypoScript, you can include this uh, JavaScript into your contact us page. Not on all pages, just uh, into the page that is under A-B test. How does it work? Uh, as soon as a user uh, goes into the contact us page, Google, uh, the JavaScript from Google Analytics decides, decides which version of the page to show to the user, and uh, it redirects to the user to one of the uh, three versions. So, as soon as you click uh, on the contact us link, uh, you will be redirected to one of the, of the three versions. And uh, even if you click uh, more than one time, you always get the same version, of course. Uh, you don't uh, move from the black to the green and go ba uh, back to, uh, the, uh, to the one without the stain. No, you always get the same uh, version based on a cookie, of course. If you, if you clean the cookies of your uh, browser, you may get another version of the page. Okay, at the end, uh, Google uh, tries to check your configuration, to test it. Uh, okay, in this example, I was working on a local environment, so Google was not able to reach my uh, typo tree installation, so I get an error for uh, each version, but it's not important for the example. Otherwise, you will see a green uh, uh, message that says, okay, this is, uh, I can reach all of your um, uh, versions. And now you're ready, and you can start your A-B test. So you prepared your typo tree website, you configure uh, you configured the, the A-B test on Google Analytics, and now you can start it. You have to push the button, uh, OK, let's go. And now uh, you, you are starting to collect data from your users. And on uh, your uh, Google Analytics uh, backend, uh, you can uh, monitor the experiment. You can uh, check the trend of uh, uh, each version of the page. And uh, in, in this graph, you can see the, uh, the trend for each version. Uh, this is one, uh, um, uh, each line is about one version of the page. This is not from uh, our test. This is just uh, an image from uh, the Google uh, manual. So you, you are seeing four versions instead of three versions because uh, this is not an image from my test. And uh, at the bottom you can see uh, the conversion rate and uh, uh, the difference between the original version. 
In this case, you may see that uh, the, uh, the version uh, 2 seems to be the best one. The version 1 seems to be the worst one. Okay, how can uh, finish your test? There are uh, five different uh, uh, possible results. The first one is that you stopped the test, of course, okay. Uh, I decide that I want to, sto to stop it for my reasons, for my personal reasons. Otherwise, uh, the, uh, the test can uh, uh, finish without a result. The time uh, limit has been reached. If your test uh, um, continues for uh, uh, three months, at the end of the third month, Google Analytics will say, okay, I'm not able to define the winner. Or uh, the test, of course, can finish with a winner. Google Analytics uh, can say, okay, this is the best version to reach this goal. Or Google Analytics may not be able to define the winner. All the versions may have the same uh, performance, may uh, give you the same uh, results. So Google Analytics may say, okay, I'm not able to define which is the best version for you. Try again. Or, okay, you can have uh, a result that is processing. At the end of the test, uh, Google Analytics requires some time to provide you the solution. Uh, it, uh, it happens that uh, uh, he will stop the test and uh, he, has, uh, he needs uh, uh, almost uh, 25 hours to provide you the results. Okay, if you need uh, some more information about uh, how Google Analytics uh, experiments uh, uh, work uh, be, uh, behind the scenes, uh, you can find them at these two links. Here uh, you can find also the, uh, how the algorithm uh, works uh, to determine the winner uh, of the test. Okay, just a few tips about our uh, A-B test. We have to, uh, uh, to be sure that I, uh, we have to think that we are having more versions of the same page. So we, we have uh, one, two, three, okay, two, three, four versions of the same page with the same content, usually. So this, is, this may be a problem for SEO. So you have to take care about uh, these versions. First of all, you have to, uh, to include the canonical on your pages, on each version. So on each version, you have to say, okay, the, uh, the original version is this one. And you, you have to put the canonical on each version. Just to say to Google uh, or to any other um, uh, search engine that they don't have to um, index this page, but uh, the other one. If you are using uh, the, the extension, this is not a problem because you have just one page and not multiple pages. You have to exclude any variant from the internal search en uh, engine, uh, from the internal type 3 search engine. Otherwise, uh, when some, uh, someone searches for contact us, uh, he may get uh, three uh, results for the contact us page. This is wrong. Uh, to exclude one page from the search results uh, from the in, uh, index search engine, for example, you can use the including search disable flag into page properties for the, uh, for the variants. For the original page, you can uh, leave it uh, unchecked. And then you have to exclude each variant for the Google sitemap. If you create more pages, uh, you have to include in the uh, Google sitemap just the original page, not its version. And when we can conduct a test? When we can get a, uh, a result from our test? To perform an A-B test, we uh, need two things, of course. The first one is uh, enough visitors. Because if we don't have visitors on that page, we can't split uh, the traffic uh, to each variant. If we just have 10 visitors per day, we have three visitors for version A, three visitors for version B, and three visitors for version uh, C. They are uh, not enough visitors. Our test will take uh, some months to get uh, some results. 
And of course, we also, have, uh, we also need conversions. We d it's not uh, enough to have visitors for that page, but uh, the visitors uh, should click on our uh, submit uh, button. Otherwise, if they just visit the page, uh, we, we, can't co uh, we can't reach our goal and we can't conduct uh, a test uh, to, uh, for, the, um, for the performance. If, we try to, if you try to, um, uh, to test a page without uh, uh, enough traffic, you may get a, tr a graphic like uh, this one. This is uh, uh, unuseful at all. And the most important thing, uh, you have to avoid making tests at different times. The test should be conducted under the same conditions. So this is important that you don't perform an A-B test with, okay, today I put, uh, I, this week I have the contact form without the privacy statement. Next week I will put the black uh, statement and the week uh, after again I will put the green statement. This doesn't work. Uh, if we think about e-commerce websites and we if we want to, te uh, to test uh, the number of uh, orders, the results may be influenced by external factors. For example, uh, next week uh, our competitor may have a very interesting um, uh, promotion and uh, he will steal traffic from our website. And uh, this, uh, uh, this is the reason why it's important to perform A-B tests comparing the v each version on the same time and not uh, uh, in different times. And uh, what happens when I have a winner? Okay, at the end of the test, uh, I may know that uh, this is the best version for my, uh, to, uh, for my, uh, uh, for my goal. Okay, in this case, uh, you have a winner. You can, for in our example, we may, have, uh, we may find that uh, the green statement uh, will improve the performances of our contact form. In this case, we can uh, get, uh, we can put the um, the green statement on the original form and delete uh, its uh, the other versions. This is the result of our test. But there may be a problem. As I said, we have more versions of the same page, so some of your users may have booked one of the, uh, one of the alternative versions and not the original one. They may have uh, shared on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, one, uh, the version C or the version uh, uh, B of your, uh, of your contact form. So you have to pay attention about that and you have to configure a 301 redirect for each version. Just uh, to be sure that uh, if uh, someone uh, booked the link to version B, we get uh, the contact form again and not uh, an error. Okay, we are at the end. So, are A-B tests useful? Yes, I think so, they are. Uh, on the keynote this morning, we learned that uh, um, by changing the, the, blue, uh, the blue color, uh, Yahoo was, uh, uh, Google was able to improve the, I don't remember if Yahoo or Google, but it's not important, it's not important, was able to improve the performances of the uh, um, AdWords. So we may say that A-B tests are useful, yes. Are A-B tests easy to implement? No, they are not easy to implement. And it's not a matter about uh, a, a technical matter. Uh, it's not a, a technical problem. As we, uh, as we just see, uh, as, uh, it's very easy to implement an A-B test. But it's not so easy to define what tests to, pre to perform. It's not easy to define how uh, to create, how to change our interface to get uh, results, uh, an, uh, an interesting result. So it's not so easy to perform an A-B test. And uh, do they provide uh, the always the expected results? No, they don't. As I said at the beginning, sometimes users uh, are unpredictable. So you may find that uh, the results you get are not always the ones you were expecting. So you may find that uh, a red button performs better than a green button. Yeah, it may happen. 
I just want to, uh, to finish my pre presentation with uh, two nice pizzas, I think, uh, that will give you uh, an idea about uh, what may happen with the uh, EBITES. I don't know if you can read. Yeah? This one. And this other one. It's not a joke, it's true, it may happen, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. If you have uh, any answer, I'm, uh, I'm here or you may find me around uh, during uh, the conference. Thank you very much. <laughs>